Get ready to explore the diverse and captivating narratives that make our channel the treasure trove of storytelling. Subscribe, buckle up, and let the stories unfold. Story 1. Am I the a-hole for wearing a wedding dress at a wedding? So, my friend, 20 female, and I, 19 male, have been friends for a few years and she recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her for a small costume party she was hosting as a celebration for her getting engaged. I asked if there was a theme, and she said there wasn't. I'm a cosplayer, so I had a lot of choices. I don't, didn't want to rock up in an anime cosplay, so I thought it would be funny to go to an engagement party as the Corpse Bride. I arrived at her house yesterday and everything seemed normal. A few people complimented my costume and I was having a lot of fun. After 10 minutes, my friend's fiancé walked out in a black tuxedo and announced this was actually their wedding. Apparently my friend saw a video of someone doing this and wanted to do the same. He asked us all to go to the backyard for the ceremony to begin. I went straight to him. I asked him if I should quickly go home and change my outfit and that I would get back before it started. He told me it was fine since I didn't know this was the wedding. I trusted him and followed everyone outside. They got married and everything seemed good. The reception was just in their house again, so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where they left off. I tried talking to my friend and celebrating with her, but she kept making excuses to not talk to me. I assumed it was just because she was tired from the big day and wanted some alone time. I didn't bother her after that, and the party soon ended. I got home, and a half an hour passed when my phone started getting notifications. I checked, and it was my friend texting me. She was cussing me out and telling me how I ruined her wedding. I was really confused and asked what I did. That only made her more angry. She told me it was basic knowledge not to wear a wedding dress to a wedding. I reminded her I had no idea it was a wedding and that I asked her now husband if I should go change and she said it was, he said it was fine. She didn't respond, but I got a text from her husband. He asked why I would tell her he said it was fine. I told him he said it was fine. Then he said, oh, I should have changed anyways and it's my fault that the two are now fighting over this. I've tried texting her that I was sorry and if I had known, I wouldn't have done it. I woke up today and saw her and her husband having blocked me on everything. So, am I the a-hole for not changing out of the wedding dress when I found out it was actually a wedding? Your friend is the a-hole. Your friend is absolutely the a-hole because look, we talk about weddings like every video now. This is now just mainly weddings. <laughs> but the thing that gets me is if you want your wedding to be how you dream it, your special wedding day, then don't make it a surprise for everyone attending. The end. I'm sorry if you tell someone that there is a costume party and it's a costume party and someone, people are going to arrive and whatever. Guess what? If you didn't lay any God dang ground rules, then you don't get any say in anything. I don't even care if like once they found out it was a wedding, if this person then went, well, this is my costume, whatever. I'm not changing. And I'd still be on the poster's side. I'm sorry. You don't spring stuff like this on people and then get mad when it doesn't go perfectly your way. And you certainly don't act like this person is acting. Like what a crappy friend to be so mad at them for this out of nowhere surprise wedding and oh you ruined my wedding what your friggin surprise party wedding i'm sorry but get over yourself this one made me really mad wow <laughs> story two entitled parents think they can park in my driveway because they want to get to the beach now i used to live on the bottom floor of a two-story house in a very popular beach town in north carolina I'm in my mid-twenties. The upstairs was rented out to top four college-age guys. So five people, five-car driveway, built for four. So one of us would either be on the grass or in a paid spot. If you had bills with your name and address, the city would give you a pass to park in certain spaces. So not a big deal, but finding a spot in the middle of summer was hard. The house is maybe 100 yards to the beach, a pretty short walk. Five minutes tops with beach gear and little ones. I would leave for work at 6.30 a.m. and return around 5 or 6 p.m. By the time I got home, most of the crowds would be gone, so a paid spot was easy for me to get. So I'd typically leave the driveway for the upstairs guys. One day I was running late and didn't get out of my house till nearly 8. The other guys had left and the driveways were empty. 
I was walking out to my car, and of course the lots are already 90% full or more. As I'm crossing the street, I see a minivan coming up and pull into my driveway. I didn't want to recognize it, so I waited to see if I knew them or they knew the upstairs guys. Out steps polo shirt, visor, bowling shorts, dad, and overly peppy mom with three screaming kids. Obviously, no one I know. I backtrack up. Uh, excuse me, do you know the tenants upstairs or have permission to park here? Entitled mom. It doesn't matter, no one parked here and Billy, Bobby, and Brandy have to get to the beach. Me. There's five people living there, myself included, and we need to be able to park. Entitled mom. Oh, so where's your car if you live there? Me. In that spot there because I have a pass. And entitled dad. Don't lie to us, you're here just the same as us and upset we know how to park for free. Me. I'm not lying, dude. It's 8 a.m. I'm wearing my work uniform. Entitled mom. We don't need to listen to you. We're going to park and you can do whatever you want. My children have to get to the beach. You're ruining our vacation, so go away. Meanwhile, the kids are climbing on my fence and trees in and out of the street. Me. Okay, I'll just have you towed and you can deal with it later. Entitled dad gets in my face practically nose to nose. Try it and see. This isn't your house. You're just a little crap. Mind you, I'm 5'11 and roughly 190 pounds in fairly good shape. Me. Okay, have a nice day. So I went to my car and waited till they were pretty much at the beach. Like I said, a very short walk, so I go inside, look up a tow service on the other side of town. Hello, yes, I'd like to report a car illegally parked on my property, address 123 street name. Sir, that's an hour away. Yeah, I know, I'm not paying, that's their problem. Okay, be there in an hour and a half. Call my boss. Not gonna be in today. Explain what happened. He's pretty easygoing guy. Told me to keep him informed. Tow truck arrives. Van gone. I leave my car in the spot and wait. It's 10.30 a.m. or so by now. Sometime around 2 or 3 p.m. there's a very angry knock at my door. Internal thoughts. This is gonna be fun. Imagine the shock when I answered the door, beer in hand, grinning like an idiot. Me. Can I help you? Entitled dad and entitled mom. You, where is our van? How did you get here? Me. Oh, yeah. Here's the car that had it towed across town. Uh, gonna be a fun cab ride. Shut the door in their face. More angry yelling and knocking. Me. Yes. Entitled dad trying to get in my house. You better get us our van back. I'm gonna kick your butt. I'll have you arrested. Me. Get out of my house and call the cops. Not gonna change anything. I managed to shove him out of the door and get it closed and locked. Now, I wait. Next 20 minutes are more angry knocking and yelling. Finally, about 4 p.m.-ish, I see some blue lights and there's a much more polite knock at my door. I grew up on the beach. It's a small number of locals. I know 70% of the locals, police, bartenders, shop owners, residents, and I know a lot of people on the island. Me. Oh, hey, Garrett. How's it going? Garrett. Yeah, it's uh, good. These people say you stole their van and broke into this house. Me. Nope, they pulled into the driveway as I was leaving for work. Pulled in attitude, walked away, said I couldn't do anything. So, called Lou on the other side of town. Van's there. I even uh, gave them his card and offered to let them use my phone. Entitled Mom. He's lying. He stole our car. I demand he be arrested. Entitled Dad, storming up behind the officer. If you don't arrest him, I'll have you fired. This is ridiculous. Sir, back up. I'm going to figure this out. ED, now shoving past the officer. This is BS. Working his way into my house again. Garrett, working his way into my house again, Garrett is able to pull him out and manages to get him pressed up against his cop car. Sir, you're trespassing now. Look over at me. Would you like to press charges? Me. Can you uh, keep him in your car until they get a cab? Gee. Yeah, I mean, I've uh, got to get a statement and everything. So I gave my statement, went inside, grabbed a beer, went out the back door, up the back steps, and around to the second floor porch. And there I sat smiling till a cab came around 5 or 5.30. My upstairs neighbors showed up, but they didn't play any part in this story. <sighs> Mwah. Chef's kiss. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, maybe having it towed to a place that was an hour away was a bit much, but also they were a bit much. They were extremely rude. And look, even if you weren't the person, even if you didn't live there, the fact that they were going to the beach and they parked in someone's driveway and were then there until, what was it, like 3.30 or whatever the story said? I'm not gonna go look it up, but still, that's ridiculous. How did they not think that their car might not get towed? Just, oh my gosh, entitled people, you need to be knocked down a few pegs and 
Well, it sounds like this person did just that, so good on them. Bravo. A plus, no notes. Story one. Am I the a-hole for making fun of a white girl for being poor because she was being racist? I'm Asian, more specifically one of the only Chinese people in my grade, which has been absolutely fun these days. So the girl in question has been racially harassing me since the beginning of lockdown when she DM'd and said, Did the bat taste good? Thanks a lot, you effing freak. I reported her to my school and they literally just dropped it because they said tensions were high and she couldn't be blamed because her uncle had corona, some BS like that. Then I got repeated messages like that from fake slash newly created accounts that I suspect were from her and I just kept blocking them until I guess she gave up because I wasn't reacting. My school district has chosen to do it in person. Massively dumb in my opinion, but whatever. On the literal second day of school, she walks up to me while I'm in the lunch line and says in a thick Asian accent, are you eating bat dumpling or dog noodles? Other people around me effing laughed, and I'm sure I don't have to explain this, but I felt effing humiliated. I finally felt like I got her off my back for a little while, and she comes back as soon as school starts, and I already know my school administration isn't going to go to bat for me. I don't know a lot about this girl since obviously I try to avoid her, but I did know that she had crappy teeth, lived in a trailer, and was very poor. I'm ashamed to have stooped to this, but I just wanted to show her how I felt for once, so I said, I'd be less concerned with what I'm eating if I were you and more worried about your diet since you're the one who needs to figure out how to brush her teeth in a trailer with no running water. Stop trying to get sent to a hospital when you can't afford health care. Other students nearby told me I went too far because it wasn't her fault she was poor. Like it was my fault I was Asian? She literally effing cried like I didn't cry every time she called me an effing C. I think she left me alone ever since though, which doesn't matter since I plan on transferring anyway. This is a tough one, and obviously I, I am not an authority on this whatsoever. I'm a middle-aged white guy, so... I don't get to say definite things about racism. Other than that, it's bad and a really crappy thing to be taking part in, even as a joke like this girl was. It's not a good joke, it's just racism. As far as if it's okay to do the back and forth, like, I feel conflicted because on one hand, sometimes people like this need to get a taste of their own medicine maybe, but I don't know, like some therapies would say, no, this person needs help, but is it on you to get that person this help that they're not seeking? Like, they are still, you know, they are still accountable for their actions and the hurt that they are doing to you. Just because that this is probably stemming from her home life and struggles at home and traumas and stuff like that, it doesn't mean she's suddenly not accountable for the crap that she's doing to you and the trauma that she is inflicting upon you. And so... I don't know that something like this is necessarily going to start the healing at all. Usually these things just have a tendency to escalate, and so I don't think it's necessarily the best course of action, but I also can't blame you for wanting to lash out after all this time when the school wasn't willing to help before, so I don't know what the answer to this is, and I leave it up to the comments to make their decisions, but uh, just don't be racist. Come on, folks. Story 2 how my entitled aunt and cousin ruined my 10th birthday. My aunt, dad's sister, has always been the textbook entitled B. When I was a kid, she never missed an opportunity to make me feel like garbage. From thinly veiled insults to outright verbal and emotional abuse, she threw what she could at me in an attempt to break me. Of course, the disgust she felt for me and the faults she found in my dad's parenting never stopped her from mooching stuff off him or asking him for favors without ever giving anything in return. She and her husband considered their son to be a gift from the heavens, and he too grew up to be a narcissistic bully who loved to torment me even though I was seven years younger than him. My mom passed when I was one year old, and both my grandmother and I had been abusive. Both my grandmother and I had been abusive to her as well, but that's another tale for another time. This is about the time she, along with her son, ruined my 10th birthday. This incident resulted in me being put off of birthdays and deciding to never celebrate them again. I just couldn't see them as a cause for celebration. My entire extended family, which included the said aunt, uncle, and cousin, along with some other relatives, were at our home, and my dad and stepmom had gone out to run some errands. 
My cousin had invited some of his friends over, even though my dad and stepmom didn't know them. My dad allowed them to come after my aunt whined incessantly about how her son would be bored if his friends were not there. I remember sitting in my room and playing with my dog. I knew my cousin would be down there, and I usually did what I could to avoid him. At that time, I suffered from a pretty bad stutter, and when I was upset or angry, it only got worse. This is something my cousin loved to make fun of, and of course, my birthday would be no different. He demanded that I come downstairs to talk to his friends. When I refused, his mother told me to stop being rude and do as I was told. I was a powerless kid, so I really had no other choice. I went down to the living room, and my cousin introduced me to his buddies in his usual condescending way as the birthday girl. He handed me a novel and told me to read out loud. I tried to read properly, but failed. I was surrounded with judgmental stares, and it made me nervous. I stuttered, which is exactly what my cousin was hoping for. He and his friends began to snicker. I got angry and stopped reading. Cousin called me a freak. His friends looked at me as though I was on display at a zoo exhibit. I wanted to prove them wrong, that I wasn't a freak, that I could read. I tried reading again. This time, on account of me being angry, the stutter was much worse. My cousin decided to mock my stutter, and all but one of his friends roared with laughter. The one that didn't actually noticed my tears and told the others to knock it off. He asked if I was okay. My cousin told him not to bother, it's just a joke, and that I was just an oversensitive baby. My rage was boiling over, and I threw the book at my cousin's face and stomped out. My aunt had seen what had happened and decided to pull me by the hair and drag me back to the living room. She told me to apologize to my cousin. I refused. She told me I needed to be taught a lesson for being a brat. I tried to tell her what had happened. She chuckled and said, So what? He's your cousin and she's older than you. You need to respect him. Now apologize. I refused again, this time with a no. I hate you. I hate all of you. All the while crying and shaking with anger. That didn't sit well with my aunt, and she slapped me before asking why I didn't just die in the womb. She told me I was a troublemaker, like, just like my mother had been. That she knew the day I was born that there was something wrong with me. That an evil bee like my mother couldn't possibly produce a normal kid. This was it. I balled up my fist and connected it to my aunt's face. I punched that bee so hard I busted her lip. By now, all the other relatives had heard the commotion and had gathered in the living room. The moment my first fist connected with my aunt is when my dad and stepmom walked in through the front door. The aunt started crying, she berated my father for not raising me right, and went on and on about how I was a violent, ill-mannered brat, etc., etc., etc. The other relatives, too, expressed their disappointment in me. My dad asked me what the hell I thought I was doing. I tried to tell him what my cousin had done and what my aunt had said about my mother. Unfortunately, my stuttering reared its ugly head again, and all that came out of my mouth was gibberish. My tears were flowing again. In the meantime, my cousin had decided to take all his friends and bail. I was punished for my beastly conduct. My birthday celebration was canceled. My dad called my friends and asked them not to come over. I didn't cut any cake. The presents I was to receive from my parents were stocked away. I was banished to my room and stayed there for the rest of the day. I ate lunch and dinner alone. The next morning, no one spoke to me. I was given my breakfast platter, which I ate in my room. That afternoon, my cousin's friend, the one who had told them to stop bullying me, came over. He told my dad what my cousin had done and what my aunt had said. My dad sat me down and apologized to me, but added that it was still wrong of me to punch my aunt. I just sat there silently. I was emotionally numb. My dad kept telling me he loved me and that he was sorry. I just coldly stared at him. My stepmom suggested a belated birthday celebration. I refused. I told them I didn't want a birthday party and that I wouldn't celebrate my birthday ever again. I kept my word. Every year since that day, my parents would ask what I wanted for my birthday, and I always replied, nothing at all. I would ask them not to get any cake and not to invite any guests. The day I was born now meant nothing to me. Even now, after all these years, I don't celebrate my birthday. Instead, I celebrate the day I landed the job that enabled me to move away from my family and start a new life. I consider it the day of my rebirth. It was the day I was able to leave all the pain and anger behind and could plan for a life that I would live on my own terms. My aunt and uncle's crappy parenting ended up costing them dearly. If you want to know what became of them, do let me know in the comments. It's pretty satisfying. Okay, first off, I absolutely want to know what happened to them. Please, for the love, find this story. Bring it to me. Second, A, obviously this aunt and cousin sound like 
truly miserable, awful people. Just awful. And second, dad, bad going. If your child has struck someone like that or whatever, and is like in tears sobbing and can't get their words out and stuff like that, assume that there's a reason for it, that there's something, and wait until they can calm down and get the story from them and believe them. Because dad, your sister, sounds like a piece of crap. And frankly, like the second day after the dad heard the story, I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, but you still shouldn't have done that. I am not a parent. I don't have kids, but I have a deep, deep love for my nieces and nephews. I have, you know, love for my pets and stuff like that. And if that's even a fraction of what I would feel if I found this out about one of them, I don't know how I would find it out for my dogs. Just trust me. You would have to talk me down from going over and giving my own sister a second knuckle sandwich. The things that she said to that daughter are so were clearly so traumatizing that she never wanted to celebrate her birthday again. That is unbelievable. That is abuse. That is just full-blown abuse, and it's disgusting. And I would be infuriated as a parent. But I give so many props to the person who posted this that they were able to still, you know, move on, find something new to celebrate, a job, and get away from a family that was not good for them. Good for you. And I hope you're doing great. And I hope anyone else who's had to deal with crappy family, I hope you can find that little bastion to celebrate and your own life and realize that eventually you can leave those crap heads behind. Story one. Am I the a-hole for purposefully stopping my classmate from winning an award and subsequently making her cry? This issue is honestly making me frustrated. Almost everyone is saying I am in the wrong. People are talking behind my back, and I genuinely don't know if what I did was correct or not. I just feel so lost. Please, please do help. I am 17 and suffered a major accident while cycling when I was 13. I have two really deep, long facial scars. I've been bullied really bad because of it. I'm tall, ugly, and intimidating as per most girls. People make fun of other people by saying things like, why don't you just hook up with slash throw away for 2k19? I'm honestly used to it. Those people don't matter to me anyway, but there's this girl I had known since middle school. Let's call her back, I guess. Sorry, I honestly don't know how this works. I had a really, really big crush on her till a few days ago. I thought she was genuinely sweet and amazing. My family is incredibly supportive, so they urged me to ask her out. I can play a guitar, so I made this whole song for her. I went to the neighboring city to get her favorite chocolate and stuff like that. This was the first time I felt like really going and asking someone out in my life. And I felt that regardless of what I do, she shall see me for who I am and at least accept me as a friend. I was over the moon when she ended up accepting. We went to a fancy restaurant, had a fun time together, and walked for 30 minutes. She was really sweet to me. The next week or so was honestly heaven. People started noticing me, even her friends seemed friendly with me. I honestly cried every day because I felt so fortunate to get so much love. It all broke down when a friend of hers who was on Instagram and followed Beck sent screenshots to me. I honestly felt betrayed and disgusted. She had posts saying, fulfilled his lifelong wish by being his valentines, making his day by finally helping him interact with my friends. He is ugly, but beautiful people accept ugly people. Hashtag ugly people matter, etc. Beck's friend then explained to me that she apparently wanted a good social media image and had thus asked all her friends to be kind to me and tolerate me till the first week of March and then distance themselves from me. She apparently wanted to win some stupid positive role model award for her college application because she was lagging behind in community service and thought playing with my feelings for a few days wouldn't hurt, and apparently since I was ugly, she was the kind one to give me attention anyway. I was in tears and honestly felt disgusted. My blood was boiling. I reached around this award, found a Facebook page about it online. I went to the authorities to confirm if her name was on the nominations list, and then had my friends at work and family as alibi. She's apparently crying a lot because she received a message from the committee saying her nomination was withdrawn. I'm now even more ostracized in school, but honestly, I have no remorse whatsoever and feel far from satisfied. 
edit. I'm honestly really grateful for not only judging me, not in that way, but also giving me love and support. Each comment means the world to me. I'm honestly crying reading some of the encouragement. No one besides my family has said these things to me. I know it might seem silly, but it genuinely means the world to me, guys. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Edit 2. Honestly, the support is genuinely overwhelming. I promise to not let you down and to continue being a good person. Thank you for the gold. Thank you all so much for the private messages you've sent me. I honestly have gone through as many as I can, and I just feel really fortunate and grateful. I sincerely hope you all have an amazing life ahead. Thank you so much. This has been one of the highlights of my year. Edit 3. I'm sorry for boring you with all these edits. I genuinely can't thank you guys enough. I showed my parents these posts, and they had tears of joy too. I'm so thankful to each and every one of you guys. Loads of love. But I have been noticing a worrying number of DMs saying to me I could have used her body and had some fun after knowing the truth. I am not this kind of person and hope nobody is. I have my own integrity. It's not right to just forcefully have intercourse with her. That's appalling. A couple of other DMs sent me links to secret webcams to expose her nudes, etc. It's honestly horrifying. I am not that kind of person and shall never ever be one. I just want to make the world a better place and the people around me happy. I thank these people for their support, but their way to go around it is very wrong. A lot of women are amazing. My mother is amazing. The person who sent the screenshots is amazing. My coworkers are amazing. And I am sure many women out there are amazing. Please don't tell me to take the red pill or anything of that sort, because I'm not going to do that ever. Please don't say all women are manipulative, etc. This post isn't anti-women in any way. It's me talking about the person I believe wronged me. Boy, this story starts off just making me about as mad as mad could be, and then became such a wonderful positive message. Seriously. Huge props and applause to the poster of this because A, I don't care what scars you have. You're a beautiful person. You deserve love and acceptance and friends and not people just using you for clout. They are the people who are ugly on the inside and they need to get help and get better. And I am glad that you also have this very positive attitude about things and realize that just because one woman did this, that not all women are like this. Just as if some men do stuff, you know, it doesn't mean people are people. Individuals are individuals. And I am very happy to hear that you still have such positive things to say after such a negative experience. And I think everything in the way that you handled it was right. You didn't try and plot some sinister revenge. You just revealed her for what she was doing, and hopefully she'll learn a lesson about life and herself. Story 1. Am I the a-hole refusing to pay my rent until my sister does? Background. I graduated from college four years ago and live at home with my parents. My sister graduated two years ago and also lives with my parents. We both got jobs pretty much straight out of college. I have to pay my parents $800 per month in rents since my first paycheck. This is a throwaway and it's still fresh and I'm really emotionally charged right now. Last night, my parents were talking loudly about their financial problems in the living room. I overheard an offer to help by paying more in rent. I was thinking $900 to $1,000 since it covers utilities, phone, and internet. My parents were grateful. Now, prior to this, I never asked how much she pays in rent. I always figured my parents charge just the same, so absentmindedly I asked a follow-up question. Well, how much is my sister paying for rent? My mom. Nothing. A long but pause. What do you mean she doesn't pay rent? My dad, visibly angry, your sister doesn't pay an effing thing. My dad explained how my sister recently bought a brand new car and hasn't paid insurance on it, so my dad had to pay for it. She doesn't pay rent, she doesn't pay utilities, phone, or anything, so for the past two years, she's been living rent-free while I've been paying my parents. So later that night, we had a family sit-down talk. My sister didn't want to pay rent, especially at how much I was paying. She offered $100. My parents suggested she pay $300. I pay $800, which my sister and I both rejected. The conversation ended with this. Sister. F you, I'm trying to live my life. These were her exact words, which peed me the F off to holy hell. So my sister storms off to her room and it's now me, my parents in the living room. I'm extremely upset at this because it's massively unfair. 
My mom is upset that everyone's angry at each other, and my dad's angry my sister won't pay rent, and she won't move out, and both my parents don't want the police involved. So, I say my part before leaving. I'm not gonna pay any more rent until she does. It's only fair, right? And if I do pay rent, I'm paying whatever she's been. But what if she pays $300 and you pay $800? No. But we really need the money. That's too bad. I get up and go off to my room. So this morning my dad comes in and tells me that I'm an a-hole for not paying rent. That I should pay rent because it's the right thing to do and all this crap. I'm like, what the hell? Make my sister pay rent. My mom, who's listening in, you've seen her, she won't listen to us. Well, that's too bad. My mom, really angry, well, we wouldn't have this problem if you didn't try to make your sister pay rent. That was the last straw that blew it for me. I slammed the door on my parents. As I'm typing this, my parents are in the living room discussing how both their children are rotten and crap was better back in the home country, back in their day when kids listened to their parents. Like, what the F? There are so many layers to what's going on here, and I really don't know how to address it. Like, first off, I feel bad for the parents having to, you know, like, support their now adult daughter without getting any sort of compensation, which I assume they were hoping that they would at this point, especially now that the dad's, like, helping to pay for her car and stuff. Like, she's an adult, I'm sorry, and their finances seem kind of tight, so it's not really okay on her part. But it's also not okay for them to be, like, charging their son and just like, well, just let her get away with it for two years and then suddenly expect her to. Like, that feels kind of crappy. But also, I don't know how these parents prepped their kids for life. Like, what did they teach them about finances and responsibility and whatnot? Like, did they fail at that point? And what, are, what about society and its expectations about people getting kicked out on their own and breaking apart family units? Like, maybe generations should live together. Maybe, I don't know. There's just so much going on here. I don't have anything great to say. I feel bad for a lot of folks involved. I can understand why the poster is refusing to pay rent. It is only fair, but I do also feel bad for the parents. But not really. I don't know. I, this is confusing. Next story. Story 2. My first personal encounter with Karen. I'm a locksmith by trade, and the job requires me to be up on ladders fixing doors and locks and whatever else is broken on a door. I was working on the main entrance door to a large second-hand store. Sometimes I have to block off an entryway to fix a door, and if I do, I always try to find another option for customers to enter and exit the building. I opened an emergency exit door off to the right, maybe 10 feet away of where I was working, to make sure there was a door they could use. I'm working away, minding my own business, up on my ladder, listening to my audiobook on my Bluetooth headset, when entitled Karen and Child walk towards me. Uh, excuse me, I need to get into the store. Uh, well, this uh, entry is out of order right now, but I ha- I need it now! You can't block the door! Yes, well, if you let me finish what I was saying, you need to move out of my way! Me getting annoyed. There's a door over there. You can go there. No, this is closer! Look, stop bothering me and go over there. This is when Karen takes things to the next level, and by the next level I mean she gets arrested. <laughs> Karen had none of my yelling at her. She grabs her son by the wrist, who has been standing by saying nothing, and tries to climb under my ladder while I'm on it. Her large purse caught on the side rung of my ladder and pulled it over, sending me, my tools, and the motor of the handicap operator I was working on smashing to the ground. I fell on my shoulder, breaking my collarbone and dislocating my shoulder. The motor hit the ground and shattered, and the ladder fell on her and her son. The cashier who saw the whole thing through the window rushed over to see if I was okay. I said no, something was broken, a bit in shock called the police and an ambulance. They arrived, and the police take statements, and I tell them I want to press charges before I was loaded up in the ambulance and taken to the hospital. The kid's father came to get the kid, who was not hurt thankfully, and she was taken away in handcuffs. No word yet on a court date or anything. Since then, I've been off work, in pain, all because Karen wanted some second-hand crap. Edit. Thanks so much for all your support, and yes, I see the typo. I'll update the all this crap is over. You guys are great. Edit. Update. So, a lot has happened for Karen. I'm not going into too much detail, but I'll give a short Coles Notes version. First off, I've been at home resting and healing, and my boss was nice enough to pay me my full wages when I'm off instead of what the insurance board would have paid me. 
I'm very grateful to work for someone who respects and cares for his workers. As for Karen, her bail was posted last week, and she's been ordered to stay with her mother until the court date. This has become a full criminal matter. She has been charged with one to two accounts of assault with a weapon causing bodily harm, two, one count of child endangerment, three, one count of harassment, and if convicted, order to pay damages for all broken property. Also, she's facing eight years in prison for all of this. Her husband has filed for divorce, and the child has been given to his father's custody with an order she is not to see him without the supervision of a child services agent and at least one police officer. I want to say, though, I feel really bad for Karen and her family. Karen ruined her life and tore her family apart. A little life lesson to everyone out there. Just be nice to people who are trying to do their job and have a good attitude. Otherwise, you could lose everything. Update. Sunday, October 20th, 2019. Nothing much has changed legally or anything, but I'm feeling a bit better. Enough that I can go to work and just do some paperwork at a desk or something. I'm going stir-crazy sitting at home. My clavicle still hurts like a bee if I move a certain way or too quickly, but I can manage at a desk. I've been off nearly three weeks, and it's time to not mope at home. Thanks, folks. Update. It's over. Court dates and lawyers are finished. It's been a long road. First, Karen has been charged and officially sentenced. $30,000 in damages, including medical costs. Four years in federal prison. Two years probation. Her son is scared of her. Her family didn't even show up to the sentencing hearing. I'm happy, I'm healed, and feeling good now. That is extreme for what she did. But at the same time, she could have potentially killed this person. Like, what she did was extremely reckless and entitled, but not just to a point of being annoying, but like endangering people, endangering her kid at that point. I don't know if time in like four years in federal prison is a just thing for her attitude or not. I mean, it kind of feels like it, but I don't know. I'd be interested in what other people have to say, their thoughts on all this kind of stuff. But I mean, the person makes a good point. It really is just easier to be nice, be patient and understanding. I mean, be willing to walk 10 feet over to another entrance or something. I mean, it's not that hard to not get so upset with people for such minor inconveniences. Just next time you start feeling, you know, getting a little worked up, Karen, just take a breath. <laughs> Story one. Am I the a-hole for checking my husband's dash cam footage on his car without his consent? My daughter and I recently went on a short trip out of state while my husband stayed as he had work and was supposed to look after our dog. On the last day of our trip, we got a call from my husband who was acting distraught and said that our dog Ellie had run away and that he could not find her. He claimed she just bolted away from him in the park into some bushes and he could not find her. Our dog is quite small, a mini poodle mix and almost 13 years old. She is still active, but it's really unlike her to run away from us and I was suspicious but chose to believe my husband and me and my daughter were in grief but did not want to blame him. When we came back home, he seemed surprisingly okay, unlike us. Ever since the pandemic, my husband started working from home, and he's always been annoyed at how much attention we gave Ellie and hated how Ellie begged to sit on our laps and his while he worked. A few days later, we got a call from an animal rescue in a neighboring state quite far from us that she had been found. I picked the phone, and it was on our landline, which we almost never use these days, but was the contact on the microchip. I told my husband, and he just said, that's great, I'm so happy, but it felt kind of blunt and insincere. I said it is strange that she got so far, and he responded that someone must have stolen her and then abandoned her. This made little sense to me as to why that would happen. When he, he was out drinking with his buddies, I copied the videos from his dash cam for the days I was away, and saw that he had indeed taken Ellie far out of state and clearly dropped her in front of his car, thrown a frisbee-like object into a field, yelled fetch, and drove off without her. I was livid and confronted him, and he just stupidly muttered how he dropped her there so she could find a farm and have a better life, and then the next day got really angry at me for viewing his dash cam and called me and my daughter a-holes. I mean, first off, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if the update to this story uh, updated the text to ex-husband because what a gross lie and what a gross thing to do. But maybe not. Maybe it's not that extreme for some people and you work through it, whatever. 
But for him to then get mad at you for checking the dash cam footage, like you're not going through his phone. You thought things seemed off, you looked into it, and then it proved that he was lying to you. And for him to get upset about that is ridiculous. You don't get to be like, how could you do that? How could you not trust me? Because you're not trustworthy, you a-hole. That's why. I'm sorry. You don't get to call someone out on not trusting you when you've done something not trustworthy. I just, I don't think you've got a leg to stand on there, pal. Story two. Am I the a-hole for shouting at my ex in front of my daughters? I, 37 male, have three girls, eight, 10, and 12. Their mother walked out on us for another man when our youngest was around four. My ex still stays in contact, though, and pays child support. A few weeks ago while doing laundry, I saw red spots in my oldest's underwear. I asked her if she knew about it, and she cried and told me she tried to call her mom, but my ex didn't call back. She's been stuffing toilet paper in her underwear, hoping that would work. I explained to her that periods are nothing to be ashamed of and found some great resources online for us to review together. I took her to the store to pick out brands of feminine products she wanted to use. She picked Playtex Sports because she's a gymnast. After we were done, I decided I should do the same thing with my other two. My 12-year-old volunteered to be part of prepping them, and we made a whole night of it. It was wonderful, and I learned a lot. I even learned what a menstrual cup is and how they benefit the environment. The other day, my ex called back. I usually arrange a video chat and leave the room so they can have some alone time and... When they're done chatting, I'll come back in to talk about boring co-parenting stuff like school, bills, etc. This last time, my ex was furious with me for talking about periods with the girls. She shouted at me that I was sick and perverted. Why didn't I call her myself if I knew it was so urgent? I could have called one of their grandmas slash aunts, but my mom has dementia, while her mom and sisters call me a loser because I teach kindergarten, so I'm not fond of them. My ex told me I was being immature and should have just toughed it out for the girls. This really peed me off. So I shouted back that maybe if she wasn't such a deadbeat and answered her goddamn phone once in a while, she could have handled this. I brought up everything she does that hurts them. She hasn't been to a single soccer game, piano recital, or gymnastics meet in two years. Every other weekend when they come home from her house, they go straight to their rooms, only to emerge hours later asking me why she loves her new husband more than them and what did they do to make her leave. My ex responded by saying, I should tell them it's not their fault, I couldn't satisfy her, and I screamed, F you, and she just smirked and pointed behind me saying, look what you did. When I turned around, my 8-year-old and 10-year-old were standing in the doorway crying. It broke my heart. I never shout, so I know I scared them. My 12-year-old stormed in and started screaming at her mom, and while I appreciate her sticking up for me, this is not a battle I want her fighting. My ex hung up before I could fully de-escalate the situation, and let's just say the girls have been given free reign of the ice cream and limitless hours of video games because I feel so bad. I even watched all the Twilight movies with them, so don't say I don't love them, but in this instance, am I the a-hole for shouting? No, you're not the a-hole! She was pushing all the buttons, and yeah, maybe you shouldn't have yelled, but it doesn't make you an a-hole. It makes you a human with emotions, and you just couldn't take it anymore because you were angry on behalf of your daughters, and for some reason this story really got to me. It's really sweet what you did. You sat down and taught them properly. You didn't, You weren't the kind of dad who's like, ooh, guys can't handle this. Like, you did so much for them, and that mom sounds just not great, and I feel bad that those poor girls have to put up with her nonsense, but I feel really glad knowing that there's a dad as cool as you who's, you know, so caring for them and who feels bad for a very human response to a very infuriating situation. And I'm sure they appreciate the ice cream and video games, but even more so, I'm very certain that they appreciate you. You are my person of the week. I don't know. Do we have graphics for that? Probably not, but we should because you deserve it. <laughs> Story one. Am I the a-hole for keeping my website up after being asked to remove it? Back in November 2018, I was arrested at work in front of my boss and coworkers. It was the most humiliating thing I've ever experienced. 
I later learned at the police station that I was being charged with multiple felonies. This came as a huge surprise. Luckily, I was able to keep my wits and lawyer up instead of speaking with the detective. For $13,000, which completely wiped my savings, I was able to retain a criminal defense attorney. However, it cost me everything and I was unable to pay my bond. This resulted in me staying in jail for a total of 54 days. At a status hearing, my attorney presented video evidence of me gassing up my car three hours away from where the crimes took place, and I ended up having all my charges dismissed. When I finally got out, I learned that I had lost my job, was in the process of being evicted, and my son was in the state's care. His mother is an ch addict, and I haven't spoken to my own parents in nearly 15 years. They wouldn't let him go to my girlfriend because they didn't consider her family. Since my release, I've learned that I can't sue the police and no one gives a crap that I was locked up for 54 days because the detective did poor investigation work. I've gone to the local press about this and was told that what happened to me happens quite a bit. They took down my info, but never followed up. So what I did was create a website sharing my story. I also uploaded the police report and some other documents from the discovery. Literally, the only reason why I was arrested was because an eyewitness said they saw me. If the detective had done his job, he could have verified that I wasn't even in town on the day the crimes took place. This is what pees me off the most. My life was ruined because of a lazy employee. I'm writing this now because my website is now ranked number two on the first page of search results when you type in my town's name. I live in a touristy town and we attract a lot of visitors over the summer. My web traffic has more than quadrupled and apparently it's gotten some higher-ups attention. I received a cease and desist letter recently, which I showed to my attorney. He said sharing my experience online isn't illegal and that everything I have stated was a fact or my own opinion protecting me from a defamation lawsuit. Yesterday I received a vis visit from two officers and the detective who had me arrested. He apologized, stating mistakes can happen. They then talked to me about my website and asked if I could remove it. I said I would delete it on the condition that the detective leave his job and never do police work again. Suffice to say, that isn't happening. After the visit I received, I more peed off that the only reason the detective apologized to me was to get me to take down my website. I don't plan to, and the only one supporting this is my girlfriend. My friends think I'm being spiteful and have suggested that I just delete it. Am I the a-hole for keeping my website up? Your friends need to shut the F up. I'm sorry, you were put- you were in jail for 54 days. That's almost two months. You lost your job, were being evicted from where you live, and I'm sure had to go through quite a bit to get your son back from the state. Be mad. They gave you no compensation. A, a detective did lazy work, and it cost you so much, and the state, your town, none of that is doing anything to try and compensate you for their mistake. And I'm sorry, that's wrong. That just feels wrong. The fact that you can't do anything else about it is disgusting. And yeah, you should have that up. And more people should know about where that happened. And just, it's infuriating. I, I can't imagine what you had to deal with through all that. How much it scared you. The trauma you went through of just dealing with that. Being away from your son, your girlfriend, losing your job. Like, I'm sorry, that is so much. And the fact that the legal system is just like, well, eh, too bad for you, but blah, blah, blah. Like, no, that's not okay. And I hope that your website gets even more traffic. And I hope folks in this video, boy, if you can find out where that website is and share it, please do. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.